Hi there, I'm Matt Montgomery. I'm part of the agronomic team here at Bex. Today I'm in a field of beans that's actually struggling with sudden death syndrome. It's not struggling with red crown rot. But I want to use this as a backdrop to talk about that other disease. I want to talk about RCR and I want to talk about how it differs from sudden death syndrome. I want to talk about how in some cases it performs kind of similar. I want to remind us of those big yield reductions that we've seen with RCR. I want to talk about the management options that we have on the table at the moment and how we're laying track down for the future. Let's remind ourselves how RCR differs from SDS. You can see on these leaves that intervenal chlorosis and necrosis, that yellowing and browning between the leaf veins that's so commonly associated with sudden death syndrome. That's the kind of leaf symptomology that we're going to see with red crown rot as well. One of the differentiators is going to be, though, that when red crown rot sweeps into a field, when it really gets going in a patch, is going to kill this plant so fast that the leaves aren't going to fall off. The leaves of sudden death syndrome infested plants will fall off. It will almost get this prickly look because it'll be nothing but stems by the end of that time. Red crown rot is not that way. It's a rapid kill of the plant that leaves those leaves at least initially still attached and reduces that plant to a brown husk that's about a third of the size of what it would normally be. And you can imagine the yield implications of that as we hit flat pods on that plant after that disease progresses. We're talking about 40 to 60% yield hits when this really gets to going in a field. Now, another way that red crown rot differentiates itself from sudden death syndrome is to look at that lower root. That's a big way to talk about this. Look at that lower root material and one thing you'll often notice is a red discoloration, just a red discoloration of that tissue in proximity to the soil line. But the big thing, the thing that really lets us know that we're dealing with red crown rot are the presence of these tiny red fruiting structures. Nothing else in the field creates those tiny red fruiting structures. Only red crown rot will do that. We think this disease, we know this disease overwinters in the soil as what's called microsclerotia, little tiny knots of fungal hair that probably let this disease persist for really long periods of time, meaning once you've got it, you've got it. And again, we know the yield losses can be substantial. So what do we do when it comes to management of red crown rot? There's not a lot at the table at the moment. Remember, this disease only appeared around 2018. That's when it was confirmed. We know it exists now across Indiana up to about the Ohio, Indiana border. And we have a handful of counties over in Missouri where it can be observed as well. And so that means that because it's kind of a new introduction into the Midwest, we're trying to get our heads around how we actually manage this thing. We don't have a long list. At the moment, we're using products like Soltro, which seem to do very well, or at least somewhat well, I should say, versus Red Crown. Not good enough in real intense infestations, but possibly something that lets us suppress the disease when we're looking at mild infestations. We also are doing things like managing stress as a recommendation, just to decrease that nickeling and diming away of yield that can happen when you pile stress on stress on stress. That's not a long list of management factors, management options available for you when it comes to RCR. So let's talk just a little bit about the track we've laid for this year and the track that we're laying for the future. One of the things that we're trying to do is stay really closely connected with our industry partners and talk about new seed treatments that might be coming on the market. And there are some promising things coming along there. And we're gonna be keeping an eye on those things, seeing if we can bring those kind of things to you in the future, if they fit. The other thing we're doing, little management things, like trying to spray beans earlier at about four nodes to 10 nodes, just to see if that would possibly make a difference and how this disease progresses. Remember, it infects early like SDS and then manifests the symptoms later about this time of year as that plant is getting into reproduction. Also, one of the things that we're doing at the moment is we're doing varietal testing. We sprinkled that around in two different locations, looking at quite a few different varieties from 2.5 to 4.5, and we're taking ratings on those products trying to give us a feel of what products might possibly 
be better options when it comes to this disease. And the final thing that we're doing is we're committing ourselves to doing even more versus this disease in the coming future. And we'll talk about that with you in seasons to come. Thanks a lot for watching. Talk with you soon.